Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Dornsife College transfer session this evening. My name is Karen Rowan Badger, and I am so glad that you are joining us this evening or this morning, or depending on where you are, we are just thrilled you're joining us. My name again is Karen Rowan Badger. I'm the Associate Dean of Admission and Student Services for the Dornsack College of Letters, Arts and Sciences, which is really just a long-winded name of saying, I have the privilege to work with students just like you from the moment you matriculate to USC through to your graduation. It's a pleasure to welcome you to our program this evening and I am by far not the star of the show. I'm really just the opening act. We have a group of amazing students and brilliant directors and advisors who are here to assist you along the way. You'll be hearing from them in just a few minutes. Of course, as we keep telling you again and again, the next chapter, this, this next chapter of your college journey isn't the way that any of us expected it to be. When I say that, what I really want to say is, how do we make this feel normal for everybody? Truly, I don't know if it will ever feel normal, but I can tell you it's still going to be valuable. Your education will be relevant. It's going to be important, not only to you, but to the rest of the planet. If 2020 has shown us nothing else, we've learned that your generation is going to be the cornerstone of change in the next modern world. Let me take a moment and put on the admission hat that I have to sometimes wear. I want you to hear this. I can say with certainty that every one of you is as qualified to be here as any other student. When we read your applications, we knew. It was kismet. We looked to admit students who would bring something unique to our university. Your diversity of majors, backgrounds, colleges you've attended, opinions, experiences. We want it all here. Because at USC, what we know is that learning can't take place if everyone is exactly the same. And that's why you're here. It only works at USC if you are you. USC is a city within a city, and you are an important member of this community of scholars. One of the nicest things about our community is we have designed a number of paths for students to take, and we've supplied you with people to take the journey with you. The challenge in all of this, you have to be willing to walk the path. You know this, you're sophisticated college students. Go to class, go to office hours, join or organize study groups, talk to your academic advisors, and ask for help if you need it. We have a saying here at USC, sometimes you have to run from the help. So please don't think you're the only one that has a question. Quite often your questions are my new questions and we can seek the answers together. My own daughter transferred to USC after her freshman year at a community college. She was so afraid she was the only student who transferred in and believed that everybody already knew what to do and where to go. When she graduated three years later, she realized it doesn't really matter how or where you start. What matters really truly is how you finish. There will be a day when this campus will open up and we will be able to greet each other with outstretched arms or maybe elbows. I look forward to being there to greet every one of you. You are the most important gift to the University of Southern California. Thanks again for being here. Enjoy the rest of the program and fight on. Great, thanks Karen. Hello everyone. My name is Noel Viramontes. I am part of the Doran Seif admission staff. We're the Doran Seif Office of Admission and Student Success. I'm actually going to be joined right now by a couple of panelists. So we're going to start with our staff panelists um, and understanding the unique challenges and opportunities that 
come with transferring institutions, we gathered this group of staff and students who will hear from in just a bit to really provide some information on resources and allow them to share their experiences to help you feel confident to navigate Dornsife virtually. So we'll start off with our introductions and some preliminary questions for our staff panelists. And after that, um, we'll have a group of our current USC students, all of whom have transferred. And then we'll bring out all of our panelists for a more comprehensive Q&A, including both the questions that you submitted when you signed up to attend this event, as well as any new questions that you can think of. So if you see the Q&A box there, that's what that is for. Um, so for now, just hold on to your questions and a little bit later in the program, we'll let you know when to start writing in that. Um, but let us start with our staff panelists. So if we could have the two of you give your introductions. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Octavio Avila. It's a pleasure to be here with you. I serve as director for USC Dornsef Career Pathways. My staff and I, what we do is we work with students individually and in groups to promote career exploration and career readiness. The way we do that is through individualized career advisement as well as by arranging and coordinating programs, events, and services to engage students in career exploration opportunities. This is uh, my 22nd year at USC. I've had the opportunity to work with students such as yourself as an admission counselor, specifically working with transfer students, as an academic advisor, associate director, and now seeing to your readiness for that next step beyond USC. Uh, I look forward to working with you and getting to know you. For more information on our office, I am putting our information on the chat box. I'll fight on and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Octavio. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Arshia Malik. Uh, I'm an academic advisor at USC Dornsife Office of Advising and Student Services. Um, and the cool thing is I was a former transfer student to USC nine years ago. So it's really my privilege to be joined with you today and be here uh, serving you. Uh, I primarily work with our Health and Human Sciences program. It's one of our interdisciplinary programs at USC. Uh, and we have a lot of our pre-health students that are joining us. And I'll be talking a little bit about uh, our advising uh, structure at USC. Um, we'll talk about what advising is and all the services we offer. We have academic advising and the traditional major programs that we offer. And the cool thing is you all will have an academic advisor for every major minor, double major you decide to choose. We also partner with Octavio's office, Career Pathways, you have a career, uh, career advisor. Uh, we have pre-health advising, we have pre-graduate school advising and pre-law advising. We all work in uh, tandem together to make sure that we are um, uh, satisfying your needs and whatever a goal you may have in your education. Great. Thanks for those intros. So I'm going to start off just with um, one question for each. So let's start with Octavio. Um, can you elaborate on what services the Career Pathways Office provides and how students can access those services? Sure. Thank you, Noelle. There's two, two primary groups of services. Uh, the first is advisement. And our office is structured where we have a dedicated advisor to work with the humanities majors, the social sciences majors, as well as the um, the, natu uh, the social science, I'm sorry, the natural science majors. So in complement to the academic advisement office, if at any time you wanna meet with us, perhaps because you want us to take a look at your resume or you have an upcoming opportunity like a research opportunity or an internship, you can set up an appointment with us via the website. Uh, throughout our website, we have contact information. You could schedule individualized appointments or perhaps attend some of our group advising appointments if there's a larger theme that perhaps you want to attend in a group setting. So we'll meet with you individually and we'll address the questions, concerns that you have. On average, we maybe meet with students uh, between one to three times. There's usually the initial introduction. We work on, on, on a few matters. We do a second meeting, we have a follow-up and in some occasions there's a, there's a third meeting for that. So that's our primary way by which we work with students. The secondary large way is through our events and programs. Now these events and programs are meant to work with students in groups as a whole, but, but they vary. So for example, one of our programs is the Work Ex Series. These are career development, career readiness uh, seminars that may focus on some basics such as career assessment to more practical like uh, career writing a resume or to um, elevator pitching or salary negotiation. So these are offered throughout the fall as well as in the spring. 
and we have the information for those sessions on, on the website. So you could attend those programmatically. Sometimes students attend one, two, some students attend all of the sessions and it's meant to be as, as, a, as a system or a series of, of talks. The second program is our employer opportunity program. And this is where we work with employers and organizations who wanna recruit you, who are looking for USC Dorn staff talent and perhaps have an internship opportunity, a full-time job opportunity. So we work, we work with these employers to come onto campus and to participate in single standing events for their respective organization or part of larger events that we also host. That brings me to the third opportunity, which is uh, the career, ne career networking expos. Uh, for example, this fall, we're hosting four career panels to bring in alumni and industry professionals. We have one dedicated to consulting, to nonprofits and NGOs, uh, to healthcare and social services, and for technology. So this way, we might be bring, bringing in about five to six employers or alumni at a given time. You could attend as, as, a, as a group, network with these individuals, find out about their opportunities, learn about the careers, about the positions, and stay in contact with them. And we do this every semester. Uh, we also have the Gateway Internship Program, which is a more specific hands-on program where over the summer, in the spring, for example, you apply to participate in the program. You have to be a Dornstadt major, meet specific criteria. But as part of the program, we help secure a paid internship for the participant. We provide a mentor during the summer experience, as well as we have you participate in career development seminars. So it's a, a triage package, so you get a, a more holistic experience of, um, of career development. So we have the work series, employer opportunity, the networking events, and the gateway internship program. In addition, I would just refer you at this time to the website because we have a series of resources, promotions, things that you can access like work guides, videos, career resources, tips, so that at your leisure from home, 24 seven, you could access this information in their interim of meeting with what's, with what's individually or participating in some of our events. Great, awesome. Thanks for that comprehensive review, Octavio. One quick follow-up question, because there were a lot of questions about this submitted. Generally, when should students start looking for an internship, especially since our transfer students come in at different points in their academic journey? That's a great question. And um, as a transfer student, every transfer student is different. So definitely want, you wanna take this respective to your timeline here at USC. So on a very general platform, let's say if you have two more years or four semesters left at USC, I would recommend that perhaps you start exploring your opportunities with our office this semester. You might not have to apply for an internship right away, but in essence, you're, you're finding out what you need to know. You're priming yourself, you're meeting people, you're gearing up your resume, your documents, you're researching organizations, in many respects, to set yourself up for the spring. So perhaps you're applying for these internship opportunities later on in October and November to set yourself up for the spring or for the summer. So that would be my recommendation because if you do have, for like, say, four semesters or two years at USC, you want to maximize the time you have here because that way you have an opportunity in the spring, perhaps the summer, because come senior year, for a lot of organizations and employers, you're already applying for full-time opportunities beginning that fall as early as September and October. And we wanna make sure that you have experience to show, skills to show and not miss deadlines to apply because you didn't have a chance to gain an internship or other work opportunity. Great, thank you. I'm sure it's gonna be helpful to a lot of our, our students listening in. All right, um, Arshia, as a former transfer student yourself, do you have any advice uh, for this population of students on how they can adjust and take advantage of all of the resources at USC and Dornsife because it can feel very overwhelming and that advice obviously from your advising perspective. Absolutely. So uh, I, I want to start kind of on the tail end of Octavio's last comment where um, my advice to you is really take the first semester to explore. Um, USC, you know, we have no shortage of opportunities here. We have lots of amazing things for you to take advantage of in terms of internships, studying abroad, um, we have programs such as May Masters and Problems at Passports where you can do some sort of research-based project, you know, uh, in another state or overseas. We have a lot of really amazing opportunities for you to take advantage of. So I would say take the first semester to explore. There's tons of student organizations to get involved and you don't want to overcommit yourself. A, a lot of times I, I, I find students that, you know, they, they transfer to USC and they didn't want to get involved in everything. And although that that's a really... Um, respectable thing to do. 
uh, but you might you might uh, kind of uh, cut yourself too thin uh, doing so. So I would say take the first semester to explore, see what's out there, make yourself a plan and a goal, and then starting the tail end of the fall semester in the spring, you know, start taking action about the things you want to uh, take advantage of. Also, uh, the most important thing, uh, speak with your academic advisor. Uh, so each and every one of you ha has its own unique path, goals, and desires for your education and what you want to get out of it. Whether it's graduate school after you finish, whether it's uh, getting a job or uh, whatever that may be. So please speak with your academic advisor because we're here, here to help you. Um, we know the resources at USC. We know all the opportunities that are available. And the better we know you, the better we can help you and serve you. So please, please meet with your academic advisor and you can visit our website, buy your major, uh, read um, our little bio and also schedule an appointment at your convenience. And um, take advantage of all the workshops that we have. We have a pre-health workshops. If you're, if you're a pre-health student, pre-med, pre-PT, occupational therapy and so on. If you're interested in any of those career paths, we have a pre-health advising office that are that's here to help you. We have pre-graduate uh, pre uh, school advisors that are here to serve you as well. If you're interested in graduate school, pre-law. And also uh, our new um, student organizations that is supported by uh, uh, our, our Dean Karen uh, is the Dornside Transfer Ambassador Program. And you're gonna get an opportunity to hear from our transfer ambassadors soon. And uh, please check out our website. I'll put, it, put, a, put the link in the chat and we're gonna have a lot of events for you in the fall semester. So. Uh, the, the, the point I want to drive home is that you, there's a lot of help and resources here for you. So please make sure you connect. Don't be afraid to reach out because, you know, we are here for you. And that's the purpose of us being here at USC. Awesome. Thank you. And one other quick follow-up question to you, because there are also a lot of questions submitted about this, is for students who are interested in exploring a double major or adding a minor, what would you suggest are the first steps doing that right now? So the first step is to uh, speak with the advisor of uh, the major or minor you're interested in. Minors generally for transfer students is easier to pursue than majors. And it also depends what the second major is going to be. Um, if it's outside of Dornzeif, uh, there's typically an uh, application process that you'll have to do. Uh, if it's within Dornzeif, uh, you can meet with the academic advisor and uh, draw up a course plan. And that's something we offer for you at any time uh, during your time at USC. Uh, we do uh, semester course planning. We do uh, uh, course planning for the rest of your time at USC. So really the best thing to do is speak with your academic advisor about your interest. And that way we can draw a course plan for you to see uh, whether or not that second major, the double major, or the minor is something that is feasible for you. Great, thank you. All right, so we're going to transition now to our student panelists. Our staff will be back in a bit at the end, but if I could have our student panelists now um, come on so everyone can see you. Awesome. Thank you. Um, all righty. So if you all <laughs> wouldn't mind introducing yourselves, please just, you know, include your name, um, year, hometown, where you transferred from, uh, any majors or minors in your USC involvement. Hey, everybody. I'm Maya. Um, I'm a senior and I'm from Orange County. I transferred from Saddleback College, which is a community college um, in Orange County. And um, my major is political economy, my minor is cinematic arts, and I'm also a progressive degree student. So I'm doing my master's at Gould with my undergrad right now. Um, on top of that, it, my USC involvements are of course, like Dornsife Transfer Ambassadors, which has been super great to meet other transfer students. Um, I'm also on the e-board of Moot Court, which is like stimulated appellate um, argumentation at USC. I'm a member of the pre-law fraternity, fraternity and um, a panhellenic sorority. And uh, I have done research in the past, although I'm not currently involved with it. So if you have any research questions, you can ask me about that as well. So hi, I'm Devin. I'm a senior studying environmental studies with a minor in marine biology. Um, I live right outside of LA in Valencia, California. I transferred from uh, American University of Paris through the Trojan Transfer Program. And uh, at USC, I'm involved with Dormicide Transfer Ambassadors. Um, I'm in a Society 53, which is an alumni relations uh, group for students. And also, I'm a part of uh, Make-A-Wish, which is you know, just like Make-A-Wish normally, but it's focused on USC. 
Hi, everyone. My name is Kiera Galloway. Um, I'm from Los Angeles. I'm from, I'm really close to USC, actually. I'm like from Compton, California. I'm a senior and I transferred from CSUN, Cal State Northridge. Um, I'm a major in philosophy, politics, and law, and I'm minoring in gender and sexuality studies. And I'm not like, I want to get more involved this semester, but currently I'm involved with the Dorn South Transfer Ambassadors as well, which has given me a great community of transfer students um, to like build my relationships with. Um, I'm also involved, involved with being a resident advisor at USC Housing, although that's turned virtual. And I'm also very involved with the Black Alumni Association as the Black Alumni Scholar, and additionally in the mentor. Hi everyone, my name is Evelyn Camacho. Um, I'm originally from Bakersfield, California and I transferred to USC from California State University to Bakersfield. I'm a rising senior studying political science with a minor in business finance. And um, some of the things I'm involved in is the Jordan Safe Transfer Ambassador Program. Um, I'm also a part of the Norman Topping Student Aid Fund and the Latino Alumni Association. And I also serve on the undergraduate advisory board for the Center for Excellence in Teaching at USC. Great, thank you everyone. Um, all right, so I'm gonna ask a couple of questions to all of you. So first question um, is, what was your transition like to USC when you first came in? And let's go ahead and start with Maya. So I, I think I may have had a bit of a unique transition experience just because I transferred with my older sister who transferred at the same time as me. Um, but on, and I, I also grew up going to USC all the time, which I actually think is really common. I think a lot of people, you know, either grow up around the community or have had family or friends go to USC. But um, on top of that, I think my transition was actually pretty seam seamless. I transferred as a sophomore, so, um, and my sister is a junior actually, and we both had really good experiences. I made a lot of friends in classes. I got really close with professors, which I definitely recommend doing. Um, if you're a sophomore or junior. And I was able to get involved in a couple of clubs that I found to be really great in terms of academics and for friends. So I think, you know, for me, I had a really great transfer experience. Um, I think the only thing I could really add on, because I had pretty much the same exact experience with talking to people in classes and stuff like that, but also like, I think a big part is when I, where I transferred from, um, a lot of people from that school were, were going to it to transfer over to USC. So I think also like trying to see if there's any people in your other classes that transferred with you, maybe you can like, you already have a set connection with them and that can like grow your base of friends out. And I think also the other thing is kind of what Maya said is joining a lot of organizations, like whether they be professional or social, it's a great way to like get that USC experience and also be able to have a set group of friends. I had a little different of a transfer experience. Um, although I did have a twin sister that goes to USC and I got to come back like come back and be with her. I kind of struggled a little bit, just being a little bit intimidated coming from a smaller campus and then coming to a bigger campus. But USC has a bunch of resources that I found useful that helped me find my footing at USC and like get connected with people. And I think you have to like, also remind yourself that you're a Trojan and you got here and you worked hard. So step outside of your comfort zone and get involved like Maya and Devin said. Um, I also had, um, when I transferred, I really, I always knew I wanted to go to USC, but I also had an older sister that was there there. So it was really nice to be able to have, um, you know, that kind of like um, somebody who can help like guide me as I like transition, like adjust to like a new school and everything. But I would say my first semester was a little bit difficult. Um, I didn't really get involved. And if I could go back, I think that'd be um, something I'd do different, like try to ask for help and get more involved and kind of like see all the resources and opportunities USC would, USC has to offer. Great. Um, next question. Since we're all Dorn Safe students, or at least, you know, you're all Dorn Safe students, <laughs> I'm not. Uh, but <laughs> what do you most enjoy about being a USC Dorn Safe student and what has been something that has surprised you here. So let's go backwards and let's start with Evelyn. Um, I think I just really love being on campus. I know this semester we're gonna be virtually, but I hope like very soon we're all able to, 
you know, be able to go back on campus. I just, um, it's a really great place to be at. Um, just walking down Truesdale and everything, there's always something going on. So I think I very, like, very appreciated that because there's always like volunteer opportunities or like a certain club or organization selling something or just advertising something going on. And I really like all the resources and opportunities. And I would say that there, I've met like some really amazing and great um, friends and also um, professors who I very much admire. And like, um, I think all the support system and the Trojan network is very powerful, very powerful. And it's a, it's a great thing to be a part of USC. Um, I go after Evelyn and kind of agree with what she said. And my favorite part about being a dorm size student is like all of the different backgrounds the students come from and like the students in my classrooms come from. There, it makes discussions so much more interesting um, as well as just, um, I like additionally, just the mass amount of opportunities there like to step outside of your comfort zone and get involved in at USC and in the Dornside community. Um, I think for me, the best thing that I sort of found about being a Dornside student is like the amount of like different kinds of panels and subject matter people have talks in. Like for example, uh, my first semester at USC, like John Kerry came to USC to talk about like international relations and also the environment. So that was really helpful for me due to my major. But I think they just offer a wide variety of talks and panels. So like if and like the weirdest thing, like piques your interest, there will definitely be a talk on that kind of stuff. It's just amazing to see all these different fields. I think my favorite thing about being in Dornsythe is that I really like the versatility of the school and like the college itself. Um, I've always been like a very interdisciplinary type of person. Like my major itself involves um, poli-sci, international relations, um, economics, um, and all that kind of stuff. So it's it's been really great for me to be a Dornsife student because it's not as, um, you have the opportunity to, to be as specific as you want in the sense that like, if you wanna study neuroscience, you can. You can work in a research lab with a neuroscientist um, professor. You can be in like the club that is specifically for neuroscience majors. But if you want, you also have the opportunity to be a part of like multiple different, um, school subjects, which is the route I took by being involved in like several like different legal things or um, political clubs and economics association and stuff like that. So I think the the variation in Dornsife has been really great. Great. Thanks so much for sharing. Um, another question that could go to, to really all of you or anyone who wants to, to weigh in. How did you build your community and connect to others? And I know the way you did it may be a little bit different than our current students seeing as we're in a virtual environment. So if you have any tips, do feel free to share. Um, but talk a little bit about how you went about building your community transferring into USC. And um, for this one, why don't we go ahead and, and start with Devin? Okay, so I think probably the biggest thing that was easy for me, because I, I did have friends coming in, so, but I always wanted to like branch out because, you know, there's so many people at USC. Um, I think the best thing for me was creating study groups within each of my classes, because, you know, at the end of the day, we're all here trying to get the degree, trying to get the best grades we can. And so everyone wants to study. Everyone wants, they don't want to be alone. So I think making study groups, like, and trying to interact with people in your classes was honestly the fastest and easiest way to like make new friends and create a base. I can go ahead and go next. Um, I would say, I think I definitely agree with that too. Try to get to know like at least one or two people from your classes just so um, it'll be helpful like when the exams comes, but also to build, you know, start meeting new people and that way. And I think another way is also joining clubs or organizations. That'd be, um, I know this semester, even though it's gonna be online, there's still gonna be a lot of outreach from clubs and organizations. I would say, try to see um, different stuff that you're interested in. You can maybe like attend their Zoom info session and you, you don't have to commit to everything. Just try to figure out like, you know, all the different options USC has to off offer and then maybe pick one or two that you'd like to try out. Or if you don't want to try something out your first semester, you don't also have to. Um, just get a feel for like the different clubs and organizations because those are um, really great ways to meet new people from different majors and different areas. So. 
I completely agree with what um, Devin and Evelyn both said. I think um, just weirdly enough, just being kind to the people you walk past will make you have a community. I feel like a lot of my friends I've just made from being on campus is because I like walk past them at the same time every day because I'm going to class and I'm just being nice and saying hello and stuff. But I think right now being virtual and making friends right now, I think most importantly, when like your professors give you the time to like join in groups in your class, like take advantage of that and talk to people and get to know them because they're giving you that time to do that and to connect. So don't just sit back and be like not talking in class and just taking notes, like get involved and like answer questions and connect. Yeah. Um, yeah, my answer is basically just echoing all three of their responses. Um, I think I made a lot of my friends primarily through clubs and class for the most part. Um, so yeah, what I would suggest 100% is going to the involvement fair. And even if you're not super interested, like Evelyn said, like at least put your name on a mailing list or become part of their like Slack or group me just so you can get uh, or like go to their information session. Um, I know I'll be at the information or the um, involvement fair tonight from 8 to 10 p.m. So like if anyone else is going like definitely I definitely suggest it. Um, and on top of that, as far as what Devin said, like study groups also have been a really great way to like get to know people who are interested in the same stuff as you because they're in your classes. Like I've already met new friends this semester already by being in breakout rooms and creating group messages for the class and stuff like that. So, yeah, I definitely think clubs and, and class would would be my suggestion for um making friends at least this semester. Good advice. Um, all right, so I'm gonna ask uh, one more question before we open it up and do kind of the bigger panel with everyone on it. So if you have any questions in the audience, um, now would be a great time to start thinking about those and typing them in to the Q&A box. Um, so don't use the chat, but use the Q&A box itself. And um, we'll, we'll get to those soon. But for our students who have been involved in research, there was a lot of questions that we got submitted about how to get involved in research, when to get involved in research. So those of you who have, uh, could you speak a little bit to what exactly your research is, what you've done, and how you found it? Okay, I think I can go first. So, um, you know, being a transfer student, you're kind of, like, it's a little bit difficult because, like, all these people like that have joined in the freshman year already know like different sort of resources to go to. So you kind of have to hit the ground running. Um, I think the best way to do that though, is to literally ask anyone and any, anyone, any teacher, just anyone, because if you don't know where to go, like teachers and students and faculty at USC do, and if they don't have a research experience themselves or like way for you to do research for them, they know who to point you out to. And that's pretty much how I'm doing my research right now over summer because like I'm doing the Wrigley RU program, which is just research for undergraduate students. And right now, like well, it, it just finished, but um, I spent my whole summer learning how to code and searching for different kinds of plastics within the ocean and the different kinds of bacteria that, you know, break them down so that it's no longer in our oceans. Um, and I literally just got that from asking different people and they pointed me along the right direction to where I could actually apply for something. And so I think it never hurts to ask because you don't know if like this will be your next step, your next foot in the door for your next job opportunity, next research opportunity. Because if you're in a science oriented major or even any major for that matter, research is something that can go on the resume and it's very helpful for your future. Um, yeah, so for me, I participated in a research lab, an economics research lab, my first summer um, at USC. And that one actually I found out about through email. So like depending on what school you're in, like for me, I'm in the economics department. Um, there's usually a somebody who works in the office who will send out like career opportunities or club opportunities that pertain to your major. So for me, I'd get a lot of like the econ ones. And I, I just saw one that really interested me on like decision making in young children and decision making in um, like low income neighborhoods in LA. And I worked the whole summer um, administering tests and doing like a research experiments and then helping write up with, with a, a professor, a research professor at USC. Um, so I would suggest maybe going to like your department um, and finding somebody in the office if you have yet to make connections with professors. And then um, after that, I would say 
really, really try to make connections with professors. Like Devin said, like just reaching out and asking someone is, is really, is just a really great connection. Um, this summer, because of COVID, like a lot of internship opportunities fell through. And I reached out to a professor that I, that I got close with my very first semester here at USC. And he took me on basically as like somebody to help coordinate and um, plan an event that he was working on with his research. So um, I definitely suggest like getting close to teachers and asking them information. And if you can, I would just reach out to your school's de um, department. Great. I I do want to chime in. I have yet to um, get involved with research, but my minor um, does offer the option to do research, like to like finish your minor or finish your major. So there are the options to do that in your degree. Your degree now. Great. Awesome. Well, thanks for, for sharing so far. All right, we're going to bring back our staff panelists as well. So we'll have everyone up here. Um, and I have more questions that students submitted. So just gonna I'm navigating on a small laptop. This is the fun part about working from home, right? I'm doing a presentation in my bedroom. It's weird, um, but this is, this is how it works now. <laughs> so um, first question that I'm going to ask, we're gonna go to Arshia. Um, how do you recommend that students best prepare for advising meetings? seeing as they're looking at being on campus for the next two to three years. Advisors can offer a lot to students. So what's the best way to prepare for that meeting? So the best way to prepare, um, I would say, usually come with a plan. So kind of think about what it is you're looking for from that meeting. Uh, the most successful meetings I have with students are the ones where students show up, you know, and they know exactly what it is they're looking to get out of the meeting. So at least know what it is you want to get out of the meeting, even though you may, you know, you may not know um, the answer to something or you know, how to go about something, but at least know what it is you, you want your advisor to help you with. Uh, that's really the number one way. It also helps to kind of familiarize yourself with your STARS report, uh, which uh, I think your advisor should have gone over that uh, during orientation. That's basically the report that shows all your outstanding course requirements for graduation and that's, that's, the, that's the report that we use when it comes to uh, planning for your classes and your academics. Um, and just know that in, in case, you know, uh, you don't, uh, you're looking for something, but, you know, we may not have the answer for, for it. We will always refer you to someone who does. So we are the best place to start with. Uh, anytime you have, you're anxious about something, you're worried about something, you don't know how to go about something, please do come see us because, you know, we are here for you, especially during COVID, you know, we are all online, you know, uh, we don't have physical offices for you to walk up to. So if, uh, if whenever you're in doubt, just please schedule an appointment with your advisor and we're very happy to help you. Great, thank you. Um, this next one goes to any of our students who have a job on campus and we, understand that you may not physically be on campus anymore for that job. Uh, but for those of you who have a student job, uh, what do you do and how did you find that job, whether it was work study or not? So um, I, I actually, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I had a job on campus my last semester there. I worked in the writing center and I was just like a front desk employee at the writing center. Um, it was a work study job. And it was nice because I found it on the USC Career Center for Students. So that's like a really, really great resource. And I 100% recommend using it if you're looking for a job, whether it's at school, work study, or just a paid internship, or just like a, any normal entry level job. There's so much opportunity on that website. And a lot of times I just look up like work study, or even if I wanted an internship or something, I would look up like law, legal, like whatever keywords um, I'm interested in. And I found a lot of opportunities there too. I think Kiara, you were gonna answer as well, right? I was gonna say something very similar to that. I got my job off of the same thing. Um, but what I, what I did was I was a receptionist for um, the history department of Darn Slice. And I think when you get a position like that, it's one of those like one of those sought out positions. So if you find a position like that, definitely apply to it because it gives you the flexibility to be able to like do your schoolwork 
while also getting that work experience. Great. And I know Octavio, I think you, you have some, probably some advice for students seeking um, jobs on campus as well. Yes, thank you, Noel. So uh, thank you to Maya and Kara. It works. Um, so I would say in addition to what was shared, um, I, I wanna elaborate on, one of the first things you should do is set up your connect -SC profile. connect -SC is available to all students and through it, you're able to set some demographics, who you are when you're graduating, your interests, your major, and certain industry or career interests. Through that, um, you will receive notifications of opportunities, internships, or jobs, for example. But also, when you log in to look for internships or jobs or work, and in some cases, research, you can log in through Connect SC and search for these, for these opportunities. You could filter for them. One thing that a lot of our students do not know is that in addition to the internship and job portal, there's an additional 12 or so additional internship and do job databases available to you under the resources tab. So within it, all these databases are already paid for and you could use the one that seems to be the most user friendly for you or it's netting the best results. There's 12 of them. So you kind of have to manage and see which one, you know, you, you use the best for, for the interest that you're looking for. But I would say that's one of the first things that, that you do um, the second, engage with our office, you know, whether we're meeting one on one or you're participating in some of our events or programs uh, or meeting some of the employers who, who come to recruit our students, engage with our office because through that, through all the different touch points, virtually, eventually in person, employers get to know you, you get to know them, you get to know the different resources, you get to become acculturated and understand how the process works and you develop a skill set within that so that you get one step closer to achieving that internship or job that you want just by engaging with us. I'm gonna put on the, on the chat box, um, I, I provided our website information, but engage with us on social media. Uh, we have a lot of networking tips, resources, job opportunities, internship opportunities that we post on Instagram. So definitely we, we provide these weekly announcements to you there. You also receive our career newsletter. So in addition to connect us and social media, we're sending you information about opportunities that are available to you. And perhaps lastly, engage with the Central Career Center. USC is a very large university. So undoubtedly, like Dornside, independent schools will have their additional career services to serve your, their specific students, just like we do. But the Central Career Center also hosts a number of employers and large scale events like the career fairs in the fall and the spring, where you can also source internship and job opportunities. So I would say those are the, the three primary ways by which you can identify and source these opportunities. Great, thank you. Um, all right, so next question I have is um, I'm gonna go to Maya for this one. And then if anyone else wants to weigh in after, you're more than welcome to. Uh, but since I know Maya, you're involved in a lot of things. One of the questions we got is how many clubs and organizations are students typically involved in? So I think we're, we'll extend that to extracurriculars in general. And of course we know the answer is it depends on the student and their their course load and their goals and a bunch of other things. But how have you found that you find the sweet spot of involvement in terms of not over committing, but taking advantage of resources? Um, yeah, I think that's a great question to ask me just because I've always been that person that when I get somewhere new, I tell myself, okay, okay don't overload yourself. Like you're going to, you want to focus on a few things. And then I always end up joining every single thing that interests me. So I kind of had that at USC too. Like I found myself putting myself on like every mailing list, which I still suggest, although you don't have to join everything. Um, but I do think there is a sweet spot. I think if you are involved in way too many different things, then you can't give as much effort or participation into the club like it deserves. And, and you definitely won't get as much out of it either if you don't have enough time for it or, or commitment. And it, and it can end up serving as a source of stress if, if it's more about due dates and getting stuff done and attending meetings and it is about like really enjoying your participation in it. So for, I mean, for me, I'm a part of um, one club that I really, really focus on. So I chose to do that as like my e-board club, like the one that I have a position in and it's moot court. So for me, my commitment with it has been like an e-board position, um, a TA. So I'm gonna like be teaching cases to students this year and participating in, in the actual tournament, like with my partner, like, um, 
like in the competition, so to speak. And then after that, I'm like pretty loosely involved with a couple other organizations. And I think, I think it really depends on the person and it, it's going to end up being a sort of, um, I would think of it as like a pie chart where you can like divide your time and energy into different organizations and clubs. So like for me, I, ch I purposely chose to put, put a huge part of it into one club, another huge part into academics. Like I said, I'm doing my master's and my undergrad in a minor. So I put another huge chunk there. And then I think I have a lot of divided time between like my sorority, my professional fraternity, um, things like that. And then of course, DTAP, I spend a lot of time working on too. So I think it, it just really depends per person. If you're really, really, really passionate about your major, I would put a lot of time into school research and maybe a club that corresponds with it. And then, you know, if you're really pas passionate about another subject or something like that, you can choose to do that. Or I would say become like a pretty active member in several clubs um, and then maybe just not take on a ton of e-board positions or a ton of, of, of uh, uh, responsibility. I think for me, what helped was, um, so I didn't take the approach Maya did. I did kind of one by one by one, see what I wanted. But I think like that approach can also be helpful because um, sometimes like depending on the organization, you don't know really what to expect when you join it. You don't know if like being a general member means just showing up to meetings and understanding what the organization is about, or if you're actually going to be doing all the groundwork, like getting stuff done, like organizing meetings, organizing fundraising opportunities. So I think the best way, if, if, if you want to do my way, that's obviously like a great way to do it, to get your like voice out, get your, like figure out what you like. But you could also go the other route by taking it one by one, seeing like what organizations want from you and like whether or not you really want to put that much time and effort into it. Great. Um, I also want to direct everyone's attention to, to the, um, in the Q and A, if you ask a question and we're answering it typed out, um, you can go to the answered part at the top and that will show you some answers there. Um, and then we can also answer some out loud too. So I wanna make sure you're not, um, not getting your, your questions are getting answered and that you don't realize that they are. All right, so um, next question, actually wanted to go to, um, I think to, there's, there's a few people and a few perspectives that I think will be helpful for this one. It's when should we start preparing for graduate school? So whoever wants to start with that one can go ahead and start. I'll go ahead and start. Um, again, like probably what been, has been echoed is that every individual's journey is, is unique, but so by the nature of you taking courses and being in Dornsip and, and, and having an academic workload, you're in essence preparing for graduate school. You know, you're, you're, you're learning the critical skills of research, of comprehension, of teamwork, of presentation, of writing, of problem solving, of analysis. So all that in itself is preparation for graduate school. But I think when you make a transition then is if, if you, and this is part of like career development is you want to assess, you want to take a time out to assess, okay, for who I am, my personality, my abilities, my interests, what I value and those experiences that are critical to who I am, do I need to further my knowledge? Do I need to further my research, whether through a master's program, a professional program or a doctoral program to, to meet those needs or those personal interests or values? And sometimes that, 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 that's not an answer you really could answer for yourself. You start with yourself, but I would say gain perspective and feedback from your faculty because they've done this. Um, and at some point, they were graduate students at a master's level. Or perhaps they went directly to a PhD program or a professional program. So definitely talk to your faculty who can provide insight to that. You also maybe want to speak to alumni. You know, there's something called the Trojan Network that you have access to. And within it, there's a couple thousand USC alumni who are signed up to be available for you. And you could reach out to these individuals because perhaps part of your question or part of your assessment is, well, for what I want to do and who I am, do I need a graduate degree? And if so, what kind of graduate degree or is it a professional degree? So before you take that psychological step or that financial investment, connect with a few alumni 
and gather, well, what do they do? Do I need this now or do I need this later? How do I pay for it? What are the different pathways that I can take? So it's a way by which you can inform yourself, do the research. You're already getting some practical training through being in Dornside. But as far as making that next step, which will involve mental effort, financial application process, writing, exams, and the like, um, the graduate program, a graduate school is typically always open to you. There's not a specific time or time in which a graduate program says you have to apply by now. So it's very unique. So for many of you, that's going to be immediately after USC Dornside. For some of you, it may be three, four, five years out, for example. So that's, that's my piece with that. Very, very true. <laughs> As someone who's currently in a second graduate program, agree. <laughs> All right. Um, next question I have is for our students. Um, and this question, it was one of the ones that was submitted, really asking, do you ever feel like you're trying to catch up to everyone else, especially coming in as a transfer student and how you, how you work through that? I guess I could go first. <laughs> um, so I think, I mean, this is my own personal experience, but being in a science oriented field, there's a lot of competition. And I think you get that pressure that you're like, I, I personally felt that pressure that I was falling behind. And so when I transferred over here, I made, I try to do my best to be over prepared because I think, you know, you don't, you don't always know how your school that you're transferring from will like be level with like USC's education standard. So I think the best way that I felt transitioning over and being able to, you know, sort of catch up or feel like more comfortable on where I'm standing is by being overprepared for classes, like making sure I'm taking the right, like load amount, not overstressing, but also like, you know, I'm not slacking. I'm not like trying to take like the easiest class out there. I'm trying to take the classes that will help like my betterment. And then also know that I'm going to be successful in these classes. Great. Thank you. I think for me, that was also like one of my concerns coming in as a transfer student. I, I like one of my fears was like not having enough time compared to students who were like, who were at USC for their full four years. But I think honestly, like I would say as transfer students, don't, don't stress it. There's like enough time to get involved, to meet people. Um, given everything being virtual this semester, it may be a little bit more challenging, but I would say don't be afraid to like ask questions, ask for help, um, reach out to people and just, it's, um, I think as a transfer student, I feel like um, even within my short time I've been at USC, I feel like I've, I've participated and I still plan to get involved in more stuff coming up this upcoming year. I mean, I think, I think you'd be surprised by how quickly you feel integrated at USC. Um, I know vir being virtual is going to play a role in that um, and it could make things a little bit different. But I think my first semester, I think, you know, even freshmen start, sort of feel like, like they're behind a little bit just because you're in a completely new environment. Um, so I don't think it's unique to just transfers, but I think a lot of us feel like wonder about whether we're behind or how we compare to other students. But I think it really depends on like your mindset and like what your goals are and what your, the goals you want to achieve um, because your path will not be the same as everyone else's. And I also think like that feeling I had was very much reserved for my very first semester. I remember by my very first summer, I had forgotten that I was, I had only been at USC for one year. Um, honestly, now, like I almost forget that I didn't spend my first year at USC because I'm a senior now. And it's kind of surprising to think that at one point I thought like I was a new person and everyone else had been here for so much time. So I think definitely, um, I, I would say like, you want, first of all, you'd be surprised by, by how quickly you become a very integrated student at USC. Um, and just also like, you know, everyone feels that way sometimes and it really just make sure you have goals that you know you can attain and you'll never feel behind. Um, just to ring off of that, what everyone said really fast. I think like the imposter syndrome is real, but if you like surround yourself with like resources and um, people that support you and a supportive community, I think it's helpful. And I think USC gives you those resources to find that. 
So I think every, what everyone said is true. And I think it is only just in the first semester and you'll like find, find yourself very soon. Great. Well, I think that's a, a great note to end on. Thank you all so much for your participation. Um, really appreciate it and sharing with everyone um, your experiences and your advice. We know this semester, is, as Karen said earlier, is very different from what we all expected, um, but want to make sure that um, you feel the students who are here feel prepared to take on USC in this new environment. So again, thank you to our participants, um, to our students who've attended. We uh, will hold more welcome experience events for Dornsife students throughout the next couple of weeks. So make sure to check your weekly Dornsife transfer connection new newsletter. Um, we're sending that out, I believe every Monday with new events so you can register for those as you'd like to. Once those welcome events conclude, we, you will start getting a monthly newsletter from our Dornsife transfer ambassadors. So that will keep you looped in to the transfer um, experience. We'll, we'll host some events through the Dornsife transfer ambassador program or DTAP. And we are um, also sharing in the chat um, our contact information in addition to having it there on the screen. So feel free to go ahead and copy that down, um, take a picture of it, write it down, whatever you'd like. Our Instagram should be there as well as our DTAP website. Um, so thank you so much for your attendance and we'll see you later. Right on everyone. Right on.